This is the first direct hit by the U.S. forces in this conflict. This is the first direct hit by the U.S. forces in this conflict. The U.S. retaliating against the targeting of its navy in the Red Sea with strikes of its own against suspected bases of Iran-aligned Houthi militias. President Obama could well find himself embroiled in two proxy battles with fewer than 100 days left in office. With fewer than 100 days left in office. He's got less than 100 days left in office. Is that what he's trying to do? Start war so that we can go into a state of emergency so that he can remain in office indefinitely? Syria burns and Libya teeters. Civilians are bearing the brunt of another Arab world civil war. The rest of the planet largely indifferent to the plight of Yemen until two events in the past week. First, the weekend Saudi-led airstrike against a funeral wake against a funeral wake in the capital that left 142 dead. And now the U.S. retaliating against the targeting of its navy in the Red Sea with strikes of its own against suspected bases of Iran-aligned Houthi militias. The Houthis and forces loyal to former President Saleh deny responsibility for the attacks, but the Pentagon is not buying it. Is Washington now getting drawn further into a conflict where it had been expressing growing doubts over its logistical support for the Saudi-led campaign? Is this the West's fight? The U.S. military made good on a promise to strike Houthi controlled targets in Yemen after two failed missile attacks at a U.S. Navy ship. According to U.S. officials, the Tomahawk cruise missiles were fired at three coastal radar sites in Yemen in retaliation to the earlier attack on the USS Mason. Meantime, Iran has reportedly established a military presence off Yemen's coast by sending two of their warships. We are seeing now is is a sure but steady escalation of the Yemeni conflict. Iran has sent two warships to the Gulf of Aden, and that is according to the semi-official Tasnim news agency. This allows Iran now to establish a military presence in the waters off Yemen, the same waters where the U.S. military launched cruise missile strikes on areas that are controlled by Iran-backed Houthi forces. Now, the United States has said that it was targeting Houthi-controlled radar sites. This is the first direct hit by the U.S. forces in this conflict, and this is how Washington explained its actions. These limited self-defense strikes were conducted to protect our personnel, our ships, our freedom of navigation in this important maritime passageway. The United States will respond to any further threat to our ships and commercial traffic. This is an Iranian-linked group uh, that is waging uh, a proxy war against Saudi Arabian allies in Yemen. And whether it likes it or not, the U.S. has to take a uh, side in that struggle. Phillips is concerned that this latest problem in Yemen could lead to a proxy war with Iran. Couple that with the ongoing U.S. entanglement in Syria opposite the Russian-backed Assad regime. And he says President Obama could well find himself embroiled in two proxy battles with fewer than 100 days left in office. Russia has warned against supplying anti-aircraft missiles to terrorist groups in Syria. A foreign ministry spokeswoman said that any anti-Russia stance will elicit an appropriate response from Moscow. Warning comes amid reports that some regional countries may arm terrorists with ground-to-surface missiles. Tac Fury militants in Syria have recently acknowledged that they received Brad missiles from their foreign backers. A rise in foreign support for terror groups comes as the Syrian army is advancing against them on several fronts. Are we heading into World War III? If you're reading uh, some Russian media, 
You might think so. That's right. What's uh, going on there? This is an interesting piece in Liberation, the left-leaning daily today. They've picked up a, a, a piece by AFP news agency. Uh, and so the tensions in particular with the US over what's happening in Aleppo, over the airstrikes, over the breakdown of talks uh, uh, between Washington and Moscow on the 3rd of October are being depicted as very serious in the Russian media. If you look at Russia 24, uh, they're reporting on anti-nuclear war, war shelters in Moscow. Uh, Fontanka news website in St. Petersburg is talking about possible bread rationing in preparation for a future war, even though the authorities have explained that it's, uh, there is an attempt to stabilise the price of flour. Right? Uh, on the radio, there is talk of civil defence exercises, building evacuations, fire drills. On the streets, you're seeing graffiti of a patriotic nature by pro-Putin artists, a group called SET, S-E-T, depicting Russian bears handing out uh, bulletproof vests. Uh, on the main straight, uh, uh, state broadcaster on the Sunday evening primetime show, the presenter was talking about Russian anti-aircraft missiles beating American warplanes. Essentially, if you're in Russia and exposed to the media, as most people are, you think World War III is on the way. The sides have accused each other of provoking violence. Clashes near the port city of Mariupol were the most violent. The fighting was fierce in Talakivka Shirakini area. Tactics of the occupants remain the same. They carry out massive shelling of Ukrainian positions with heavy weapons. French President François Hollande says a roadmap needs to be drawn up for resolving the Ukrainian crisis. Hollande made the comments during a telephone conversation with his Ukrainian counterpart, Petro Poroshenko. The French president also said the roadmap should lead to Ukraine gaining control over its borders with Russia. Leaders of France, Germany, Russia and Ukraine were scheduled to meet in Paris next week to discuss the Ukraine crisis. The summit, however, was called off after Russian President Vladimir Putin cancelled his trip. Putin made the decision after the French accused the Kremlin of war crime in Syria. Moscow says there's still a chance for the summit to be held as scheduled on October 19th. Ukrainian troops and pro-Russia militias are observing a fragile ceasefire in the east. Sporadic fighting has, however, put strain on the truce in the past few months. UNESCO has renewed a resolution criticizing Israel for restricting Muslim access to a holy site in East Jerusalem. The draft text repeatedly refers to the site, known to Jews as Temple Mount and Muslims as Al-Aqsa Compound, by its Muslim names, a move which has angered the Prime Minister who says it amounts to a denial of Jewish history. The theatre of the absurd at UNESCO continues and today the organisation adopted another delusional decision which says that the people of Israel have no connection to the Temple Mount. The motion put forward by Arab states was approved by 24 votes, 6 against and 26 abstentions. A Palestinian delegate defended the cultural body's decision. Israel pretends that in this decision uh, Palestinians and the Arab group uh, denies the historic importance of the old city of Jerusalem to uh, the Jewish people. Actually, uh, if you read the third paragraph of the decision, you will see that it starts by the recognition of the historic importance for the three monotheistic religions. The holy site, which was taken by Israel in the 1967 Six-Day War, has been the flashpoint of Israeli-Palestinian violence in recent years. On Thursday, there was an important meeting between the chief rabbis of Israel and top religious leaders from the Palestinian Authority in the president's residence in Jerusalem. They released a united call to stop the violence and harm of innocent civilians. This meeting included the highest levels of religious leaders of the two sides ever convened. There is a growing link between criminals and terrorism in Britain. A new British report says an increasing number of criminals are joining ISIS and, quote, creating a gangster jihad. The report from the King's College London says nearly 60 percent of European jihadists studied by researchers had been in jail previously. The center's director says former criminals are a perfect fit for recruitment from ISIS. The researchers say ISIS offers criminals a chance at redemption without having to change their behavior. 
Satanists are asking Boston City Council to allow them to have the invocation that kicks off at City Hall meetings. The Boston Globe reports a chapter of the Satanic Temple told the council president it would be a breach of the First Amendment for them to turn down the request. They stated that those who normally give the opening prayer are overwhelmingly Christian. Other Satanic Temple chapters have made similar requests in other cities. More breaking news now from Boston, where two police officers are in extremely critical condition after being shot. We got shots fired. I need every officer available. We have two or three officers inside the building. They have been shot fired. The resident inside a Gladstone Street home in East Boston called 911 to say his roommate, a gunman, had threatened him with the knife. Two officers entered the house and are critically wounded. Richard Santolo and Matt Morris are shot multiple times. A cavalry of officers rush in in spite of heavy, heavy gunfire. The tactical teams were there uh, in, in short order. They got there very quickly. In fact, they were inside engaged in the operation. This was a, a ferocious firefight. As far as I could tell, I walked the scene. I saw the ballistics evidence. I saw the blood, masses amounts of blood. Police believe the roommates had a domestic dispute partly about the thermostat. It was a tactical um, rifle, uh, shotgun type instrument. And, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, he had a ballistic um, Best on. Countless cops came to help, evidence of the glue among the brothers in blue. This is dangerous work, so I want to I want to commend the, the men and women of the Boston Police Department. Any call they get in any particular day could turn into that. And I don't think anyone could have anticipated how quickly this incident went violent. Overnight, a stampede of anti-police protesters clashing with riot police in Oregon, outraged over a move to give officers a pay raise. A peaceful protest shouting inside City Hall. They're paying it to be dividers. Quickly pitting demonstrators against police. Who is there? The crowd here demanding Mayor Charlie Hales and City Council hear their voices, their concerns over a new police contract. And behind closed doors, that contract getting the votes it needed to pass. That's when we saw pushing and shoving, both sides saying the other started it. <laughs> and outside, police in riot gear using pepper spray. At this point, it was people turning their attention to the street, blocking buses and max trains. Officers then moving in. In all, 10 people arrested. Our cameras catching two of those. I support Black Lives Matter. I don't support what they're doing here. Hours after this began, one of the organizers, Greg McKelvey, asking everyone to head home. Um, I think we saw the most anti-democratic thing that we've seen from Portland City Hall. He's now taking aim at the commissioners who voted yes on that contract, saying it's time they be recalled. We've been covering this now for more than 24 hours what do you want people watching to know what do you want people to take away from what we saw i want people to know that we were peaceful also i've been hearing things about uh it was us throwing stuff that got the police to respond now we were in there completely peaceful so what's next well mckelvey tells me there's something massive planned for friday he wouldn't go into much detail other than to say it involves the commissioners but that would not be happening here at city hall in the meantime police are anticipating that and reviewing what happened tonight a bomb threat at legoland hours ago caused that park to shut down for the entire day and also sent police combing through every inch of the park. Fernando Verrua and his family are visiting from Venezuela and eating lunch at Perkins was not on their agenda. But it's where they ended up after a bomb threat forced them out of Legoland and their hotel. Uh, we asked why. They said, we cannot tell you right now. Please proceed to the parking lot. They took some cell phone video along the way as people were scrambling to leave. People like Chris Johnson and her grandchildren. They're here from Deltona. At the hotel they said, you know, it was okay, we could go up to our room. We went up to our room, and about five minutes later, they're pounding on our door saying, you have to evacuate, you have to evacuate. We now know someone left a note at the park claiming there was a bomb, and late today, the park's general manager, Adrian Jones, told me they don't believe this threat is real. At this time, we believe this is a hoax, but we take all threats seriously. And with that, they will stay closed the rest of the day. Park goers not happy, but very glad that park officials move quickly to keep them safe. They say it's the first time it's ever happened. You know, things happen. It stinks, but you know, we'll try to make it up to them tomorrow. And
All right, so WikiLeaks email hack revealing that Hillary Clinton, if she becomes president, would support, quote, closing the gun show loophole by executive order, by executive order, and imposing manufacturer liability. Wow, so that fear, that fear that a Clinton presidency would impose gun control, one of the big reasons we've seen gun control sales, or gun sales rather, set a new record last month. Take a look, uh, some of the gun stocks we're showing you there on the screen, most of them are higher right now. As we've been reporting, conservative leaders are outraged after members of Hillary Clinton's campaign staff mocked Catholics and evangelicals. WikiLeaks's latest release of hacked email shows her campaign chair, John Podesta and John Halpin, calling Christians backwards and unaware. House Speaker Paul Ryan is blasting those comments, saying all Americans of faith should take a long, hard look at this and decide if these are the values we want to be represented in our next president.